Hello, I'm Joel Blackford with Beth Hess at Sabbath Fellowship. Thank you for joining us. We are virtual only. The phone number works. We're based out of St. Paul, Minnesota. We do the philosophy of eschatology, what you need to know, your reality, our existence. We give you the thought behind the thought. John Haller does the best job on the news, so just watch him. We try to solve a little bit of Revelation. We're working on Revelation 17 and 13, talking about the mark of the beast. We're talking about building the beast system, and we'll also include in a little bit from Genesis 3 and Zechariah 2, talking about the temptation that Adam and Eve had and, and how we're being tempted right now to set up the mark of the beast. I will be joining Doug and Scott every Thursday evening for the Prophecy Roundtable show. It's a lot of fun. And once again, we are building the beast system. You will talk about lilies tonight and see it everywhere. And we'll talk about the beast and the lilies and things like that. So we do the thought behind the thought, what you need to know. We try to give you the Bible accurately. Tonight it will be the Bible <laughs> revelation, yes, in Greek, but also in Hebrew. Uh, so we'll show you that and see what you think, and then we'll talk about prophecy and the news. So basically what I'm going to be citing today, the first source will be iPet Goat. Yes, it's occult. Yes, it came out in 2012. Please note, 2012, which is weird I pet goat. Goat is based on, say, the Mark of the Beast, and it's based on Azazel, which is the Leviticus 16 story. And, yeah, it's dark, but you can go watch it. It's six and a half minutes. It's six minutes, 66 seconds long. And and so it's about Azazel. It's about goat demons. It's, it's also about signs that are coming up that match with the Bible. I'll prove it to you as we move through. Okay, also number two, our source will be Rebecca Sterling. I interviewed her twice. Nice lady, messianic believer, loved the Lord the whole way through. She's dead now. She died just a couple of years ago. Um, I tried to interview her daughter, but she declined me twice now. So she'll be talking about the royal order of the lily, which is the beast system, which is peace represents the lily. You'll just see it. Okay, and so uh, that's Rebecca Sterling. She had this vision in 1999. She finally showed you this in a diorama, which is kind of bizarre, uh, which is kind of figurines and things like that. But we'll go through this. Okay, that's number two for my sources. Number three is the temptation that we're experiencing, that Adam and Eve experienced. And so same temptation, different day. We're touching the apple of God's eye. I will try to prove that to you today, which is Zechariah 2.8, which is, it, it, we'll just give you the verses and see what you think. Number four for the sources will be the Ele Hasadot, which would be the, the mystical writings of John, the Hebrew Revelation. It comes from, uh, the uh, uh, I assume, uh, a South African family. And so it's very interesting, and we'll go through it. You will see what you think of the Hebrew Rev Revelation as I go through it tonight. It says that it was published in 2021. I'm working off the 2024 version of it, and I'm really thrilled with it so far. So we're going to go into this weird video, I Pet Goat First. They, talk, they start out basically with Bush acting like a dunce. He's wearing the dunce cap. And they're basically, what I'm telling you is that 9-11 of 2001 seems to be related to the second seal because everything happened east of Jerusalem during that time frame. And they, this is them kind of agreeing with me. So when the Lamb opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature say, come, and then another uh, horse. So this means that all the horses are the same, all the riders are the same, not the first one being the Antichrist. It is just another horse, alos in the Greek. Horse came out, a fiery red one. Its rider was given power to take. That's lakak, that is snatch peace, lakak shalom, from the earth and make people kill each other. To him was given a large sword, Makura. And so, yeah, that's Revelation 6, 3 through 4. That seems to be what Bush and Cheney and Bush Sr. Jr., the whole neocon set, have created this second seal, which is basically a large sword going across the Earl, the world, and it's just causing the, the Arabs to revolt. And so that's what Bush did. Okay, now we move forward in this video, I pet goat, to Obama, and he's quite proud of, of himself. I'm saying that likens to the third seal because the third seal opened during the summer of 2012, and a whole lot of things happened in 2012, including this video. And, and when you look at the presidents later on, you're going to notice that I combine 
old Biden into one presidency. We'll see what you think of it. But anyway, the third seal is come and see. And I saw uh, a black horse and one sitting on it had a pair of scales that denotes judgment. And I heard, as it were, the voice in the midst of these four living beings saying a quart of wheat for a Daenerys and a shlosha of quarts of barley for a Daenerys. That means inflation, rapid, horrific inflation. But the shem and the oil and the yayin wine, that's for the wealthy. So the poor are eating the simple things. The wealthy are going to withhold food from the poor. Inflation is going to be horrific, and you may not harm. That is atechesis in the Greek, which is really saying lo avon, avanim. Don't willfully sin. Don't be stingy and greedy towards the poor, and they will be. And Obama kind of represents that. And so he's going to unleash a lot. He shows up in the video many, many different times. Then they move in the character's progression, uh, and once again, it's I Pet Goat, to an eclipse scene with the Palestinians, I believe, behind her. She represents Israel, the apple re represents Jerusalem, and the Palestinians are supposedly under barbed wire. But the problem is, they are terrorists, and they want to kill the Israelis. So she is Lily. Lily represents, as a flower, the beast system. So she's we're adding her as a character. She's sitting in what most believe is an eclipse. and but Is it a solar eclipse or it is maybe the lunar eclipse? It is a trap, okay? And uh, the barbed wire is, I'm saying, Gaza, West Bank, okay? And then, so I'm showing you, uh, you know, news events from today. This is from Al Jazeera. Which countries have criticized Israel, Israeli attacks on Gaza? Well, there's a bunch of them. And so, basically, I'm saying that there's a covenant made for this land with those people, and everybody's complaining about it right now. It's a Brit Olam with Abraham's descendants. So that day, Adonai made a covenant with Abraham, Abraham in this case. I've given your land to your descendants from the Vadi of Egypt to the great river, the Euphrates River. That's Genesis 15, 18. God answered, but Sarah, your wife, will bear you a son, and you are to call him laughter. And I... Itzhak, and I will establish my covenant with him as long as uh, with him as an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. That's Genesis 12, or rather 17, 19. So we're, we know those covenants are in existence, but yet everybody is complaining about the covenants. This is a brittle lamb. This is an everlasting covenant with the descendants of Abraham, uh, the Jews, and really the 12 tribes, the Hebrews. Okay? And so that's the complaint. So we get back to the scenes here, and it gets darker. The barbed wire is still there. She's still there representing Israel. She's got Jerusalem, and she rolls it off her lap. Now, once again, the eclipse is still there. You can see, is it the 2017 to 2024 eclipse, or is it what I think, which is the upcoming pack of nine, especially the, the first two in 2025, of the lunar eclipses, the blood moon eclipses? I don't know, but the, the guys are saying uh, that this is the eclipse scene, and also the the notes from this, the wallpaper from it, say that the apple is not mine, she thought. So Israel's Jerusalem, Israel doesn't own Jerusalem, God owns it, and God is jealous for it. So Adonai Tezvaot has sent me on a glorious mission to the nations that plundered you, and this is what he says. Anyone who injures you injures the very pupil of my eye. That's Zechariah 2.8. So once again, Lily is Israel, the apple is Jerusalem, and the apple falls away and starts rolling away. I cite the blood moon eclipses. I don't think it's the solar eclipse. I, I, that has meaning, but I think it's the lunars coming up. And the biggest ones are going to be in 2025. And, and once again, if you start to see the sun going from yellow to white, to red, to black, and you know one of these blood moon eclipses is going to happen at that same time frame, you better run underground for at least 12 hours because it's going to be bad, really, really bad. So when you see that sinking, that's what I think is the symbol of her little circle there that she's sitting within, that the eclipses are yet to come. And, and let's go back just so I can show you one more time. It's the reddish color behind her. It's not the whitish color and, and the black. It seems like that is the case. So once again, the Abraham Accords are going to go forward. 
once Trump is back in office, yes, he'll be back in office. It's in the, it's in the Bible. I'll, sh I'll show you. Don't worry. And the Abraham Accords will establish a Palestinian state, I believe, which will cause the United States to be divided. So basically, here's this everlasting covenant from Isaiah 24, 3 through 5. The land will be completely stripped completely plundered, for Adonai has spoken his word. The land fades and withers. The world wilts and withers. The exalted of the land languish. The land lies defiled under its inhabitants because they have transgressed the teachings, changed the law, and broken the everlasting covenant, the Brit Olam. Okay, so that's what we're looking forward to, is these types of peace agreements going forward, which can't occur if we want to have peace. It will cause wrath if we do the opposite, if we break that covenant. So the Abraham Accords will, re will return to the forefront as Trump comes back into office and Jared Kushner comes in to push that through. He's already working on it. So according to a recent podcast by Dan Sr., uh, where he interviews Walter Russell Mead, whose book on Israel was called The Art of the Covenant. Mead says the Biden administration is actively pursuing, without saying it, Jared's vision, and Jared's deserved uh, the Nobel Peace Prize for the Abraham Accords. This, is, this came to me from a friend, and it seems to be what's going on on the inside. Even the Biden people are saying Jared deserves the Nobel Peace Prize, and it looks like they're going to put this together. So, Basically, the next Israel his Hezbollah war will be far greater uh, of a catastrophe than Gaza, and that's what's probably coming up. This is from Newsweek. So we'll see what occurs, but that seems to be on the forefront going forward. If my take on Revelation 17 in the Hebrew is correct, okay? So the G7, you can see the logo there. You can also see the G7 in the apple scene here okay so this is ipad goat again the apple rolls down rolls through the g7 we just had the g7 meet in june of 2024 during shavuot which is really weird and you can see the logo there from germany from 2022 so you know that's probably what they're likening it to the g7 meeting okay and i'm not sure anything's going to occur yes this year i think it's next year but maybe they set something in motion the pope addressed this time he is the false prophet, I believe, okay, from Revelation 13. So he's the second beast of Revelation 13. And he was the first pope to address the G7. He's the guy that addresses aliens. He's the guy that had his head thumped by Biden. You know, <laughs> I used to be the pope of the Catholic Church when I was growing up in Scranton with my mother, Teresa. It's a true story, man. No joke. You know, so um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, uh, this is from a Catholic news source, you know, citing that the Pope uh, addressed on artificial intelligence, which is coming uh, along with aliens, too. So anyway, it's just you know what the Pope represents, all sorts of strange stuff. Now, there are good Catholics, but I'm not thrilled with what the Pope represents. OK, so. Then the apple splits. That would be Jerusalem being split. That would be the split that's probably going to come as a result of the Abraham Accords. And then out pops the beast system, the lily, okay? And so lily rolls the apple out, which births the lily. And, and you'll see that as I move through more information in the slides, okay? Obama is quite surprised by that, quite unnerved by that. Then we continue on. And then America seems to be torn apart, and the Twin Towers fall down, and this is, once again, I pet goat, but America falls as the Twin Towers burn on 9-11, because it will increase. I mean, the war is just getting started. The Twin Towers fall as jihad war increases, and so you can see it fall, and then you can see a figurine-type person falling like he's falling from the Twin Towers. And it's just interesting, and then you'll see the jihad war increasing. That brings about the lily, okay? And then then you see the satanic figure pop up in the I Pet Goat series. And according to one of the sources, there are 15 water lilies. If this was created in 2012, that, that would mean the 2027 B system would occur. So it could be 2026 or 2028. I don't know. It could be any of those time frames, but it seems like it's 15 water lilies. You can see the lilies in the picture. You can see them, you know, uh, according to this guy, he counted them and there's 15. And so that's the Antichrist. He's got his feet on fire and he floats along through this canal and really brings apart, brings 
into being the beast system. Okay. Then we move as the AC rides into the sunset and the world collapses. You can see the church specifically behind him collapsing. And he, he sheds a tear over it, but he doesn't really care. And then he moves out and, and things continue on as he moves away, uh, basically uh, bringing that beast system with him. So, so now this is Rebecca Sterling. I interviewed her twice. She, in this particular one, it's the guillotine, which is number six. She's talking about solar-powered smart chips designed for injection into the human eye. And she lists off that the chips will be threefold. They will look like a lily. They will have a triangular shape, and they will be put underneath the eye. And so she says it's basically that the world is on the brink of war, and so they push for world peace and the Antichrist will come in and sell this Order of the Lily, the Royal Order of the Lily, to prevent World War III. So this is our video. This is You can find this, David Strode, A Voice Crying in the Wilderness. And it's, it's a very interesting video. Actually, go to number five first, watch that, then number six. And if you can get through the whole series of these, really interesting. He, he, she is introduced in the guillotine. She thought everything would kick off in 2017, but she's, she's, I think how it's going to work out is the, the Shemitah year was 2017. That's the last Shemitah before the final Shemitah, which should start in 2024. And then the Jubilee will start in 2025. And I think that's what she's getting at. She just couldn't see the total picture. Now, everything gets clearer as you get closer to the goal, but that seems like what's going on. So now we're going to go into Justin J. Van Rensburg, his Hebrew revelation, and we're going to go through some verses and compare them with what she's talked about and what the slides that you saw from iPad Go. So let's do this. I'm going to try to read the left-hand side in each case because it will be his version, but you can read the right if you want to. Then one of the seven messengers who had the seven bowls came and spoke to me saying, come and you will be shown the judgment of the great harlot who sits over much waters. And that's much peoples. Okay, so this is chapter 17. Okay, and then it continues on. And keep in mind, the AC's mom loves lilies. lilies. Uh, Rebecca mentioned that in her video, okay? And the guillotines too, the blood poured out. So, with whom the kings of the earth commit adultery, and those whom she makes drunk with her wine. So he brought me into the wilderness, and I saw the woman who sat on the animal, whose appearance was like the appearance of lilies. See it? Okay, lilies, appearance of lilies. It was full of names of reproach, and had seven heads and ten hordes. And the woman was clothed in red garments. So it, normally you would see red and purple. In this case, it's red garments with the appearance of lilies, okay, instead of, of purple. And it's very intriguing that he did it that way. So it's not purple and scarlet. And, and the scarlet is gone, too. It would be Adama. So it would be earthy red, okay, which could be scarlet. But it is an earthy red plus the lilies, Okay, and upon her were much gold and goodly uh, stones and gems, and there was a golden cup in her hand full of uncleanness. And that is Tame in, in the um, Hebrew. And on her forehead was written the name of the secret of the great city Bavel, and the mother of harlots and uncleanness of the earth. And I saw the woman drank, drank of the blood of the set apart ones and of the blood of the testimony of Yeshua, and I had great amazement when I saw her. So that's then Revelation. Uh, 17, 2 through 6. So you see the lilies twice, okay? I've given you enough witnesses now that the, the occultic source is citing lilies, that the, the religious lady, my friend Rebecca, cited lilies. And now it's in the text of Revelation in the Hebrew version, the appearance of lilies, the appearance of lilies. You see enough witnesses now. And then the guillotines and the lily again, and the lily will be a great gift during that time frame. Okay, this is a better way to read it. So the royal order of the lily, all people worldwide will now live in peace and safety because of the lily in the instant humane elimination of troublemakers, which is the guillotine. No inhumane deaths, no pain, no waste, no prisons, no expense for feeding, housing, or caring for troublemakers, no crime, no fear. We turn a life liability into an asset. You will be rewarded and awarded for helping make the world a better place for all of us in this beautiful win-win program of the lily, okay? Lilies are the ideal sympathy flowers for a friend. 
the restoration of innocence to the souls of the dead. That's the lily, okay? And so the soul of the deceased returning to a state of peace. Lilies are the most popular flowers for funerals. They represent restored innocence in the soul after a person has died. White lilies symbolize purity and sympathy. Lilies are especially symbolic for Christians who believe Virgin Mary's tomb is covered in white lilies. This is from peach tree petals, uh, blogs, things like that. So now we're getting into the third point. Uh, that I'm proving through on all of this. Unfortunately, I think I went too far on all of this. But basically, the serpent was more crafty than any other animal without an eye and, and that he had made. And so he says to the woman, did God really say you are not to eat from any tree in the garden? And the woman answered the serpent, we may eat from the, tru from the fruit of the trees of the garden, but about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden, God said, you are neither to eat from it nor touch it or you will die. The serpent said to the woman, it is not true that you will surely die because God knows that on that day you will eat from it. Your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So the woman saw and ate and handed it to her husband who happened to be standing right next to her, Adam. And so this is Pari. Uh, so this is Va Ma Pari, which would be me. Uh, so that would be basically and from the true fruit of the tree, high eights. And so this is the temptation. I'm seeing that same trap temptation is occurring right now in Zechariah 2 as the Antichrist and the Satan will be tempting us to punch God in the pupil of his eye. So let's read Zechariah 2, 3 through 8. Here the angel who was speaking to me went forward and another angel went out, met him and said to him, run and tell this young man Jerusalem will be inhabited without walls because there will be so many people and animals for Adonai I will be her wall of fire, her firewall surrounding her, and I will be the glory within her. Up, says Adonai, move, flee from the land of the north, for I scattered you like the four winds of the sky, says Adonai, move Zion, Zion, you know, so, so Jerusalem. You will be living with the daughter of Babel, escape. For Adonai Tezvod has sent me on a glorious mission to the nations that plundered you. And this is what he says, anyone who injures you, injures the very pupil of my eye. So you'll see this is uh, Baba, which is, it's kind of like an apple. It's, it's, this is how Hebrew works. It's not as easy as Greek. You just have to know it. But yeah, you touches the apple of his eye. Okay. So that's, it's a trap. Okay. So I'm telling you that there was a trap with Adam and Eve. It's a satanic trap in the end times to divide Jerusalem and injure the very pupil of God's eye. Okay, so once again, the words tapuak is apple, pari is fruit, ishan is uh, the pupil of the eye, but it seems to be the pupil of God's eye, and then baba, which you just saw, which seems to be the apple of the eye. Yeah, this is how Hebrew works. Get used to it. You just have to know your words and figure things out. And I want to give a shout out to God's roadmap to the end. He's a crazy rapture guy, but he does good research. And so as we see the day approaching, are you ready for what is coming? And it's rather interesting that he's the one that kind of figured out some of the things that I needed to look at and helped me tie it together. So he got me started on this search that helped when I found the Hebrew revelation, obviously. So once again, I'm telling you that this is going to be like a, a lily Insert it into the eye. It will have three different probes. It'll have probes that monitor your bank accounts, monitor your, your health, and monitor <laughs> your salvation. So once again, it'll be an eye type of a thing. It'll be the eye, which is kind of your forehead. Okay? And it would be hard for John to say in your eye. That would be eye in, in the Hebrew. He's instead saying forehead, which is more logical to have, put a mark there. So once again, it seems to be the mark of the beast, this tripartite uh, lily that will be inside the eye and have three different scanning devices working, according to Rebecca Sterling. That seems to be the mark of the beast. And it's just interesting to see other people espouse the mark of the beast. So King Charles, he, he's, he's talking about the mark of the beast, but he won't live long enough to experience it. You know, it deceives the people living on the earth by the miracles it is allowed to perform in the presence of the beast and tells them to make an image honoring the beast that will be struck by the sword so the Antichrist will die and then come back to life again. 
It's allowed to put breath into the image of the beast so, so that the image of the beast could even speak. And it was allowed to cause anyone who had not worshipped the image of the beast to be put to death. And it forces everyone, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive the mark on his right hand and on his forehead. I'm arguing that could be potentially the eyeball, according to Rebecca, preventing anyone from buying or selling unless he has the mark that is the name of of the beast and the number of his name, Revelation 13, 4, 14 through 17. So it's just interesting to see the mark of the beast and the red color. So that's real close to the Adama and the Hebrew. And he doesn't have the lily on there. He doesn't need the lily. It, it, it doesn't matter if he has a lily or not. He has a beast in there. Okay. And, and you know who it is. It's Baphomet. So you should be able to see it. So now we're going to go back to the text and finish things out. But the messenger said to me, because of what you have... Uh, because of what do you have amazement? I want to tell you the secret of the woman and the animal she sits upon because of what she has seven heads and ten horns. Okay, he has. Okay, so interesting how it went from she to he. Okay, maybe that's just a typo. Maybe it is a she. Okay, then the angel said to me, so basically I'm arguing that these seven are the U.S. presidents since 1969. Some are combined. Nixon's number one. Carter's number two. Reagan's number three. Bush Sr. and Jr. are number four. Clinton is number five because the Bushes are the same presidency. Okay, Clinton's number five. Oh, Biden, yeah, combined again, is number six. Number seven will be Trump. He will be reelected based off this. And then from the seventh comes the Antichrist. And the ten horns will be the ten big tech millionaires that was carrying her. So you have to have the presidents. And based on the fact that they are on the mountains of uh, uh, what I'm getting at is Mount Rushmore, okay? And and so those are the presidents. And these guys never made the Mount Rushmore, but that's where we put our presidents, on the mountains, okay? And the tech, 10 big tech billionaires, they're there. You just don't know which ones they are. That's Revelation 17, 7 in the Hebrew. Continuing on to verse 8, the animal which you saw was, but is not, and will come again from the Tehom, the deep, uh, and he will go to Sheol, then the, man, the men of, of the earth will be amazed about him when they see the animal who was but is not, although he is. Okay, so there is this time where they go into power, then they step back for a long period of time, then they jump back into power again. So you'll notice that that animal, the beast, will be somebody that you have known, and he will pop back up again. Okay, the beast you saw once was, now is not. And we'll come up, basically it's the same thing, but that's more of a, a, a translation on the right-hand side. The Hebrews on the left, okay? That's what I wanted you to see. And then we'll finish out on a little bit more here, Revelation 17, 9 through 14, and kind of give you the background again. And here is the word that needs insight and wisdom and understanding. The seven heads are the seven mountains. You see the mountains there, okay, so Mount Rushmore, which the woman sits upon. And these are the seven, doesn't say kings, seven, okay? And of them, five have fallen. One is, but the second is not yet. And he, when he comes, he must be for a little time. So that would be Trump, okay? The seventh, the second in this case, but the seventh, because five have fallen. One is, one is Obama. And then the second term happens with Trump, okay? That's a little tip off there too. And when he does come, he must be, Trump will only be for a little time, okay? Then the eighth, the Antichrist will come out of that system uh, and that peace accord, and and then you know he'll go to Sheol. Now these big tech people jump in at that point in time because they help the beast along. They hand power to him. So then the ten horns you saw are ten. Doesn't say kings in the Hebrew who have not yet received a kingdom. So big tech doesn't have a kingdom. They they have power like a kingdom. They have cash, but they are just ten. And they will rule as kings with the animal for a little time. They have one plan. That is gnome in the Greek. And so they would have one program, programming, you know. And they will give their power and might to the beast. And they will make war with the lamb, but the lamb will overcome them. So we will win out in the end. And then, so what I'm getting at to end it all out is America is the whore, specifically New York City, for allowing the United Nations to curse Israel. So the presidents are cited because they're from the time of the first seal and they're from the time of the 60s, you know, Nixon especially, where you'll have the U.S. presidents that overtly love Israel, but covertly allow the U.N. and others to curse Israel the whole way through 
Trump will win in 2024, and that's how you proof test me. You know, uh, he will take office in 2025. The communists will go nuts. That's Dimitri Dudeman and Groover and Wilkins, Wilkerson. They know America is going to go nuts after this occurs. And they saw how America would go nuts. OK, the Micronova, I think, will coincide with a blood moon eclipse in 2025. And that will go cause things to go even more nuts. It will not be the ELE. It will not be the kill shot. It'll be doggone close to it, but it will not be a kill shot. It will wake up us because it will be like an EMP. The riots will occur first, then human chaos will ensue. Nations will crave World War III but need to rebuild infrastructure first because the electrical grids will be out. That will delay World War III for seven to eight years. Okay, So where are we right now? We're in the birth pangs. We're not in the tribulation. We are going to be in the Great Tribulation. When the lilies hit you'll know you're entering into the Great Tribulation. So just watch for the lilies and watch for the eye chips and, and the tripart uh, ability of the chips to be able to do three things at once and be placed into your eye, you're basically your forehead. Okay? And so we are not there yet, but we're close. You work on you, which is clean garments. You can't be naked. You, you know, you're coming up to a festival. You have to have clean clothes, white, clean garments. That means... You need to have faith and you have to have good works. You're looking at a Rosh Hashanah or Yom Kippur or a Sukkot of a future year. What garments will you need to wear? Well, it's a wedding. You have to have clean, beautiful garments. So thank you very much for your time and God bless you. And hopefully we can talk again next week.